If you look at the previous term of local governments, uh, when the metros went in the direction of coalitions, the dismal failure of the coalitions either to stay coherent, to form a governing council that can deliver on the services that everybody speaks about. Now, our scenario that we look at at the national level is as follows. Now we went through the election in November. Um, by January, councils start meeting and it's filibustering, making noise, shouting on the council floor. So the question that we are asking ourselves is, if at a local government level, where your electoral mandate is much clear, clearer, it's actually much more direct, streetlights aren't working, sewage is not being handled, water is not being delivered. So theoretically at a local government level, your political leadership should be in a position to find each other, to find a compromise. Now, if we can't do that at a local level, here's the question, 2024 happens, the ruling party gets less than 50% and we need to negotiate a coalition at a national level. And the same thing will happen, will it, the same thing happen that what we see in January on the floor of the Council of Johannesburg, where the council chamber is just turned into a chaotic shouting match. Is that where the South African democracy is heading? And the major concern that we have is if local level political parties and leaders cannot find each other to make a compromise to govern to the benefit of society and the economy, then we are in seriously dangerous territory. So we do see a major risk that given the ideological posturing, given the kind of um, way we see um, local leadership not being able to find each other, it seems like there's definitely a risk that we could end up with a similar situation at a national level if no single party makes a majority. Firstly, what is compromised is everybody's ideological posturing of we want to deliver services to the people, we want to fix what is broken. That's the first thing that gets compromised. If something like that is to happen at a national level, the damage to not just the confidence in the system, but the damage to the state system itself and the outlook for its stability can be absolutely tremendous. And I'm going to give you a horror scenario example. When we talk about state failure in Somalia in 1990, 1991, the state fails, it collapses. But what people forget is in the run up to the failure of the Somali state was a disputed election. It was a disputed election that led to a situation where the Speaker of Parliament had to be appointed as a caretaker president. Chaos erupted and ultimately led to the total collapse and evaporation of the state. So I know that's an extreme scenario, but we cannot ever underestimate that those kind of things are possible in the life of a system. If as a country we went through insurrectionist actions by a faction from the ruling party, destabilizing the economy, the society, the state last year, then the question becomes what could happen if you have a situation like that at a national level where you can't form a government. So it is a very dangerous scenario to, to think about. Look, at the first instance, I think we need to do a lot of work in um, rekindling trust by citizens in the democratic process. I think the low voter turnout in the election last year is a clear indication of people not just losing trust in leadership, but also losing trust in the democratic process. So we need to do a lot of work on educating ourselves about the importance of maintaining the democratic system in the country. That's the first point. I think to the bigger question of saving you know, the failing local government systems, it often, I think, starts with getting certain basic things right. You know, like appointing the right people with the right kind of skills and qualifications, with ethical leadership. Without those two, at that fundamental level of the state, you will never be able to move it uh, in, the, in the right direction. And I also think this will probably ask for more of civil society, more of the business community to intervene, to step in, to find ways of influencing, find ways of supporting institutions. Um, and also to kill what we call extractive institutions, which is basically institutions captured by elites that ultimately end up pillaging the institutions for their own benefit.